Hello to you and thank you very much for joining us. Now, in this episode, we are going to be talking all things cyber security and we are joined by Peter McKenzie from Sophos. Hello to you. And of course, we are joined by Jez Turner from Chess. Hello to you. MTR is uh, something, is this something that's brand new from Sophos? Something that's just out of the woodwork? Tell me about it. Yeah, so Managed Threat Response is a, think of it as a security team looking over your shoulder. Okay, so modern threats are very advanced. They take on lots of different forms and attackers are more and more using what we'd class as living off the land. So using the legitimate applications that you run in your business for malicious purposes. So the type of things that your antivirus product is not going to detect because we know you use them. We know you want to use them. Okay, so a security team are looking for suspicious behavior, suspicious actions, things that have either gone undetected or maybe require more investigation. Now, unfortunately, a lot of businesses don't have a security team that can be monitoring this type of stuff 24 seven, or if they do, they've got shared roles and maybe not as enough experience. So the managed threat response service is 24 seven monitoring of your machines, identifying threats, taking action, and basically being the superheroes to ensure you're not on the news. But why, why do we need it? Is there a must for it? Have we really got to have it? Yeah, well, I think everyone's probably seen headlines of um, whatever company has been destroyed in a ransomware attack. These are common headlines we see nowadays. And most people think, oh, well, they didn't have backups or they didn't have good AV and virus. Um, the reality is it's far more complicated and many of these victims will have had a good security product in place, will have had backups, and the attackers have found a way in. They've stayed off the radar. They've used tools that are allowed in the network. They've compromised admin accounts. So they're using your own existing technology against you. And then maybe they've manually deleted your backups before launching the ransomware attack. So they do as much as they can to manually. So there's a big difference between malware and hacking. You kind of need to understand malware is just software. It's designed to do stuff. Hacking is people. And they're on your network typing in commands. And if it fails, they'll type in a different command and they'll keep going. So detecting that kind of activity is very difficult. And we're at the point where you still need humans to help with that. So speaking about threats and all that kind of stuff, Jess, for this one, I'm, I'm gonna come to you. Um, what are the kind of typical and common threats that we generally see on a day-to-day -day basis? Yep, so uh, ransomware is still uh, very high up uh, on the list. Um, and um, we're still seeing a lot of uh, your phishing uh, attacks as well, uh, and quite a lot of um, spear phishing as well. So very specifically targeted uh, emails to specific individuals um, to get them to, to, to do some sort of action. Um, that then may be backed up um, by some sort of code being on your network, which the bad guys can then use as, as we were talking about to start navigating across your, uh, across your network. So, so we're very often seeing a combination of, um, uh, it might just be straightforward ransomware, but there might be some, some bad code uh, on your network that they're using um, to uh, have a look about and then tying that in with a, with a phishing attack, a specific phishing attack to get someone to do something in response to what they've found um, on the network. Uh, for example, they might be looking at people's calendars to see when um, senior members of staff and sea levels are out so that they can then prompt someone to do something uh, in the background for example transferring money um, while that ceo or uh, um, cfo is getting onto a plane there's an urgent requirement to transfer this money and away we go and we see that actively happening um, out there uh, now peter can mtr help against the kind of threats that jez was talking about yeah well if you think about your typical security product. They have to work for a global audience. There are restrictions on what they can do because for example, it would be great if we could block all your email. You know, no more threats <laughs> via email, right? But of course you need to be able to use email. So an antivirus product is not gonna do that. But an MTR team, we can be looking at these things that are coming in, looking at the stuff that you are allowing that could be used 
for malicious purposes. So we have that visibility to see what isn't being detected. And where there are obviously similar services from other organizations, um, we typically go one step further with not just monitoring, but we can jump in and take actions. So uh, with agreement from the customers, we have the ability to you know, delete files, delete processes, shut down machines if we need to. So we can actually be there helping you when you're asleep, for example. So from what MTR does, are there, are there any other benefits that come with it? Yeah, so it's not just reacting to suspicious activity. We are also proactively doing what we call threat hunting. So leadless threat hunting. So we're looking at your management costs on the information we get, and we're trying to find anything we can that is suspicious and investigating it. So where, uh, you know, something like maybe a user has started copying files to an external location. Maybe they're allowed to do it, maybe they're not. That's something we might look into and report it back to the customer. We also, um, we do our asset discovery. So I don't know how many incidents I've been involved in now, but one of the main root causes we see of how an attack started is from an unprotected device. You know, an attacker has found a Windows 10 machine that has remote desktop protocol, RTP, open to the internet, they've come in, there's no antivirus, and then from that point, they've used it as what we call a beachhead to start scanning the rest of the network, identifying other accounts that can be compromised, and start their attack. So we find that machine and we say, look, this was an unprotected machine, this is how it all started. So identifying every single machine on your network and confirming are they protected or not is a big feature that we uh, really try and use as much as possible. So you've just said that the uh, that MTR is a threat hunting product, right? It's a threat hunting thing uh, that is led by humans. Now there are AI tools that are out there to do the job. So are, you know, having this human kind of led threat basis is this better? Do you think? I wouldn't say it's better. It's uh, in combination with, you know, there. So if we take machine learning as an example. That is designed to help with scalability. We see 500 odd thousand new malicious files every day. No human, even if we worked with all the other vendors, no human could individually analyze every individual file. It's just too unscalable, really. So things like machine learning help with that, making these quick automated decisions. Do we think this is bad? That's great. That really helps us out. But then the humans come in, we're helping to identify patterns. So yes, there was a file detected here. Okay, great, we've removed it. Now the product would basically move on from that and start looking for anything else. Where a human go, well, we'll just say, how did it get there? Has it been seen anywhere else? Is there any sort of patterns or behavior that is too difficult for a computer to sort of identify across an entire network? Whereas a human can look at it and go, there's something suspicious going on here. So Jess, for this, I'm going to turn to you uh, for this one. So say if a certain business has already got cyber security measures already in place, they already have their own policies and procedures, how can MTR link in with their current policies and procedures that they already have in place? So I think it's crucial to think about um, you know, what, what, what the bad guys are trying to do, uh, essentially, and that is to get around um, a lot of the measures that are in place. You know, we mentioned about um, visibility of what's actually on your network, uh, and that, that's, a, that, that's a big area um, today, as, as we've identified. Um, if you're not absolutely aware of every single thing that's on there, um, you are widening that, um, that threat landscape that, that, that an actor could use. So um, it's a very, a very difficult question to ask an IT manager um, to make sure an entire network is, is fully secure. Because often IT managers are in, in your average organization, they're not a security specialist necessarily. They're acting rather like a, a GP, like a doctor who you might go to and um, who might then refer you on to a specialist if you've got a particular um, problem and this is this is the area that IT managers find themselves in now so it's very very challenging for them to absolutely cover and make sure everything is secured as it could be. There's a challenge in many ways resource, um, time, budget, 
um, knowledge, all, all the usual areas that, that we see. So what MTR does, uh, if we plug that onto a network, as we've said, is it gives you that other layer of experts actually monitoring what's going on. So if something's triggered, that will flag up and they will investigate it. Just as though you've got an expert like that on, on site right there and then. The beauty of this, uh, and is why this is going to be highly disruptive actually in the industry, is that the economies of scale are there. So this isn't going to cost you the same as employing an expert or a team of experts. Um, Sophos already has that with their MTR team. And with that being spread out over all of their customers, we get those economies of scale. So we're seeing it as being um, very affordable. So if I was a business and wanted to take on the MTR product, uh, does it have a subscription service or is it, you know, billed annually or what's the best way? Uh, yeah, typically it's sold by on a yearly service subscription. Um, we do offer a MSP uh, option as well, so you can do it by monthly billing. Um, also for what we class as a, an active incident, so the example being, let's say you're not a Sophos customer, what's wrong with you? No. Um, <laughs> and you've just been hit by some form of attack and you're saying, I need help, I need it now, then we can come in and maybe for like a three month contract we can help you out through, you know, get you through that incident as well. So Jess, Peter, thank you very much for inviting us here to Sophos and talk all things MTR. Now, if you want to keep up to date with all of our videos, all you need to do is simply head over to chessict.co.uk where you can find all our videos just on there. But from me, Ryan, I'll see you next time. It's bye-bye for now.